So next up is one of my office mates since I've been here. You've been here longer than I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jeannie is a lifetime veteran of intuitive abilities. She is a Reiki master, an NLP practitioner, uh, a medium, a psychic, a reverend. Have I left anything? An author? Uh. She has a very, very wide range of abilities. And so I'm delighted to introduce right now Reverend Jeannie Lovers. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, my story begins, I guess, when I was a toddler. But, uh, you know, being raised back in the 50s and 60s, you kind of got shut down. So um, my journey has been a very interesting one. Um, I literally had to shut off my gifts uh, until, uh, I want to say, well, 10, 11 years ago. And... It's interesting, if you have a calling or a contract or a um, covenant with God, you will be told about it. If you're not living it, you will be informed about it. And uh, I find it rather intriguing on how all of this is done. But anyway, I am, like she said, all those multiple different things. I can take somebody who is um, just curious about the metaphysical world and blending it uh, with spirituality and science in their workplace and their home life, etc. Uh, my gifts allow me the integration of being able to tap into their consciousness um, and the multiple levels of consciousness that each one of us are and giving them a little insight as to who they've been, uh, what they're about in this life and if they're walking the road that they're supposed to be walking, and if not, how to help guide them to seeking people um, to assist them on their journey. Um, I also have uh, awakened to what we would term now more uh, openly than years ago, uh, interplanetary galactic communication. And we have some very, very beautiful sisters and brothers. And we're not talking just the ascended masters and the archangels and uh, all that sort of thing, but we're talking the multiple races. And they are helping us tremendously. And uh, I find this part of my journey very intriguing because now I can tap in and help people at the 3D level, so to speak, the physical level, and uh, look into their future or look into their past or whatever. Uh, the most intriguing one was a group of young people and two middle-aged in their 40s. Uh, ten of them were sent to me all within just a couple months time frame that all came here, came back from 3062. And I'm going, why are, they all these, why are you sending me these people from 3062? They all, they kind of screwed up in 3062, so they came back to kind of straighten things out. And ironically enough, one of them um, is literally studying to be a, uh, if I remember the term right, uh, a doctor, but of um, bioenergetics. And, I mean, that's, that's a real intelligent being and such. But that, that's what he was doing in 3062. We, we know stem cell now, but in 3062, we evolved with our galactic brothers and sisters to become extremely intelligent. So it's, it's quite a gamut that, uh, um, that I toy in, put it that way. <laughs> but um, I find that it's very beautiful now to take... Um, documentation from the Nagamandi scrolls, um, the uh, Sumerian texts, um, and uh, Egyptian mythology, all the ancient teachings, uh, things that are coming up on TV now with ancient aliens and all that. And they were talking to me about all this a, a few years back. But it's interesting now for me because now I'm interconnecting it with the Keys of Enoch. And uh, I have a study group that that's basically what we do, and we connect into the different things. But it's uh, very surprising on how the ancient teachings, our current Bible, all versions, 
uh, Eastern teachings, uh, the Mayan teachings, the uh, indigenous teachings, all of the human race from the time of the existence of this planet being created and us evolving, Atlantis and Lemuria, because um, we're now at the end of our fifth 26,000 year roundabout of the Kali Yuga. And this time things are extremely exciting because we came in here for a purpose. We wanted to be here during this timeline because we wanted to have the opportunity to stick around a little bit longer and possibly evolve into immortality within our physical. And all these different pieces that I've put together from these different teachings, etc., literally have guided us on that journey and they all basically are saying the same thing for within this timeline. Uh, this is metaphysical world teaching, etc. It's not something that you would necessarily hear uh, on the mainstream of conversation. But it's an opportunity now that we can awaken our consciousness, who we currently are, to connect into what is termed our higher self-consciousness, our angelic self, because remember, there's an aspect of us that exists in the angelic realms. And then I've met all levels of angels, and there are some incarnated angels purposely doing specific work. And all the way on up to our oversoul, which some would uh, look at as soul level, our divine essence of soul spirit. We literally have the capacity now of integrating, allowing the energies of that level of our consciousness to flow through us. And the reason I know this is because I recently went through this. And they told me that I could and they told me that I needed to in order to continue to do my work and well that kind of concerned me until a friend of mine said you need to go see somebody and I went okay so I went to Dallas with them and I met how many of you are familiar with um, um, Lee Carroll with the cryon writings very fascinating gentleman um, I didn't want to get into the cryon writings, et cetera, but anyway, I found it being very uh, interesting because he's in charge of the uh, magnetic grid that holds our planet where it is, basically, in adjusting those frequencies, and then the Christ consciousness grid has been reactivated, and the Mayans didn't have known about all these different changes for thousands of years. Well, these changes within the grids are the influencing factors that are helping us make our shifts, which is allowing more of God's light to come into the planet, which is causing our solar changes, and which is going to increase making the solar changes and affecting our planet. Anyway, um, I knew by the time I got done listening to him two and a half days later that he was the man that I needed to ask a question of. And I looked at him privately and I said, is it possible for someone to literally integrate their energies of the oversoul, the divine essence of the God self that we are? And he said, absolutely. And he says, and that's what you're supposed to be doing. And I looked at him, and I went, yes, that's what they tell me. But how can the physical body withstand that level of power, so to speak? Because I had it envisioned as, I don't think I can handle, I don't think my physical body can handle that kind of uh, frequency, etc. We are prepped for it. And the reason why we want to possibly integrate that level is because then we become this magnificent, reawakened, lowercase g, God co-creator. That's what our shift is all about. We are going into, with 1212 and 1221, the Mayans have talked and everybody has talked worldwide 
on the 1221 shift, etc. Nobody knows exactly what it's all about, but I knew, do know that there are principles behind it, the reasons behind it. We helped co-create it. We wanted this planet because it's the only planet in our galaxy where a spirit can come in, house a body, and literally experience through the physical and still have divine interconnections with our highest level essence that constantly stays in the God energy. What more could we ask for? What more could we give ourselves as unconditional love gift of, of, of being, but to become that highest essence that we already are to experience because that's why God created us. He wanted us to experience anything and everything at all levels of experience. Well, we're at the lowest level, basically, and it's the only planet, and the human race is the only race that we literally can experience through the physical five senses, but we also have seven other intuitive level senses that we can access. And when we evolve and awaken the seven level intuitive essences, then we have magic that happens within us because we can sense when we're getting sick. We can sense when somebody else is getting ill. We can hedge off the illness. We can um, look at somebody and possibly say to them, why are you thinking about changing jobs? Uh, well, how did you know? Why, why are you asking me that? Well, because where you're thinking about going or the career shift that you're possibly going to take, choosing to do is not as conducive as you think it is. We can help each other in that way. We've got young children coming in. We've gone from my generations of the first generation star children is what we are considered to the indigo system busters. They're now in their 30s and 40s. Then we ended up, with, then the crystal children started coming in in mid-90s. And they overlapped for about a decade with the <coughs> indigos. And then beyond the crystals, the rainbows came in. The rainbows are beefed up even more than the crystal kids. And the rainbows are the ones that have, that look at their grandparents and go, I remember flying a spaceship. I was the captain. I remember going and playing with the, uh, they'd name this other race. And, you know, the grandmother sitting there with her mouth wide open of, huh? You know, what, what is this child saying to me? Then you've got the second generation star children. They started coming in about mm, five, seven years ago. I happen to have eight grandchildren, and I have, and my family is the whole gamut. And five of them talked to me while in utero. When the first one happened, I went, this can't be happening. How can this happen? We have interconnectedness consciously at so many different levels that we can communicate, we can help each other, we can assist in so many different means. The children now are trying to understand who they are and what they're all about. And they're thinking, I can't deal with this, so they're going into the drugs, the substances and everything. And yet, they hear voices, so they're being drugged for that, which is not a health, healthy scenario either. So the world is open to us. We have anything and everything access to. It is phenomenal on how, the, how we can integrate who we've already become at the highest level. And we can love each other unconditionally with no judgment, no uh, um, animosity towards each other, etc. And we are creating our new world, this age of Aquarius. And we apparently are doing one heck of a job because it is now going to take place. And I know this because of the information that I'm receiving. And it is a phenomenal, positive, absolutely awesome time for anybody to be alive right now. Yeah. Yay. 
Any questions? <laughs> I believe it or not, I have to, I, my students will tell it's hard to shut me up sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it, life gets very interesting, you know, and, and I even learn from, from the students and the clients that come from me. Uh, you know, they might tell me something that I never knew that I could do. You know, I had an experience just today. It was like, oh, this is so awesome. A higher level of this one particular person came through and talked to me from their fifth dimensional consciousness to guide the person who they are right now and told me how I can help that person. That's never happened in 10 years of my um, uh, teaching and assisting, etc. So we are great, we are grand. Do, do you remember your galactic lives? Good. Question. Yes. How, or how did you go about accepting this? Hmm. <laughs> I, was, I was a business entrepreneur like my parents were. And I was on the road in sales. And I became ill sitting on my couch. I was five weeks in. None of the doctors could tell me what was wrong with me until all of a sudden this male voice came to me and said, shut down your business. And I looked around my living room and I thought, oh, no, 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 no. Shut down your business. I'm going, okay, I don't want to hear from you because the last two times, you came, three times you came to me, it was not good. So I really don't want to hear from you again. And I'm going, why do I have to shut down my business? I finally have gotten it to, you know, profit productivity, etc. That is not what you came there to do. <laughs> Excuse me? Now, now you're going to tell me what I need to do. Why? What did I come here to do? You came there to teach. I really cracked up laughing. And I said, I'm not a teacher. I barely got any college education to begin with. And if I chose to teach, how would I go about it and what do you want me to teach? how to be you. And I said, I don't even know how to be me. Why do, who am I? And they said, teach them how to find their inner self. And that's where I started. And I said, how do I do this? We will guide you. They have guided me to compose eight courses, literally eight courses, to take somebody from the basics all the way up to literally embodying the essence of the over-self. And I know that there's even more. You said that you, the first three times I spoke to you, something negative happened. What convinced you the fourth time that it was going to have a positive result? I argued with them for 10 months. <laughs> they didn't really succeed at it until my business went down. The sales literally plummeted. And I said, I get your point. Fine. Then I had the task of talking to the husband who does not relate technically, uh, does more so now, but didn't at that time. So it's been an interesting journey for 10 years. And I, I thoroughly enjoy what I do. And I like the idea that I can help people and I find them helping me. So it, it's, you're beautiful people, you're, you're phenomenal beings. Give yourselves the opportunity to get to know who you are at the levels that you've already become and use those gifts and those abilities because I honor you and respect you and thank you. <laughs>